Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini, and if you're a handbag maker or you want to get into learning how to make bags and organizers, keep watching this video because I'm sharing with you my money saving tips. Now, if you're new to my channel, you may not be familiar with all the different types of video tutorials and online video courses and clubs that I run. I've been running online video bag of the month clubs for almost four years now, and I'm working on the next one that I'm getting ready to release very, very soon. And so I wanted to put out a survey and get your feedback. Hundreds of you have replied and have mentioned to me what are the main two issues that you struggle with when it comes to handbag making. Now, a lot of us like to carry a lot of handbags, but many of us also like to give them as gifts because they're not as time consuming or maybe don't require as much money and energy as something like a quilt does, right? So they're kind of more instant gratification projects, which we love because we can still incorporate our sewing and quilting techniques and have something functional come out of it. Now I have designed dozens of different handbags, wallets, and organizer designs over the years that I've run in my other clubs. And so for this one, I really wanted to tackle specific issues that my students struggle with when it comes to making handbags. So in this video, as I continue to prep and work for the release of my my next bag of the month club, I wanted to share with you some money saving tips. If you've ever made a handbag or purchased a handbag pattern, you probably were shocked the first time that you looked at the supply list, right? Hardware, sometimes two upwards of four or five different interfacings needed to complete the one bag. So although it is a smaller project, oftentimes they end up being very costly because of the specialty fabrics, interfacings, notions, hardware, and all that other stuff. So one of the complaints that I get from a lot of my bag club students is that they spend so much time and money creating these handbags, and although they do have customers who want to purchase them, not a lot of people are really willing to pay what it's worth, right? Not only the money that you have invested in the materials, but also your time and expertise. And so in this video, for those of you that do make handbags, whether you're gifting them to people and you're trying to cut back on the amount of money going into each handbag, or if you're selling them and you need to cut back on costs, but still present the customer with a nice professional project, then I'm gonna share with you these tips that I hope come in handy. Tip number one has to do with the exterior fabric that you're using to create your handbags. If you're using 100% quilting cottons to create your handbags and you're putting that fabric on the exterior, you probably know that you need to back it with something, some type of an interfacing, whether it be a woven, a non-woven, foam interfacing, fusible fleece, there's always something else that needs to be added to the fabric so that the bag itself has some type of a shape and structure to it and isn't quite as floppy as just the fabric itself. So my tip to you is cut back on some of those additional stabilizer and interfacing costs by using a sturdier exterior fabric. Many of you have probably never even thought to look in the apparel or fashion fabric section of your local fabric store. Now the reason I would recommend checking out those fabrics specifically is gonna be for your bottom weight fabrics. These are fabrics that are a little bit heftier, they're a little stiffer than just a plain quilting cotton, and oftentimes when we're purchasing fashion fabrics, they come a lot wider than a 40 to 44 inch wide quilting cotton fabric. So not only can you oftentimes find it for less per yard, but you're also getting way more per yard because instead of stopping at about 44 inches wide, many of these go up to 57 or 60 inches wide. And you're also cutting out that step of having to add interfacing. Now granted, you won't be able to pull this off with every handbag you try, but some of the floppier kind of drapier bags can totally stand to use a heftier fabric that costs you less versus using a drapier fabric and having to add the additional cost of interfacing. Here I wanted to show you two samples that I use very often. This is 100% cotton chambray that is found in the apparel sewing section. It's 100% cotton just like the quilting cottons, but it has a little bit more body. It's more of a medium weight chambray. So I have made plenty of bags, zip pouches and things where I have not had to fuse this to anything because it has enough body all on its own. So also consider, like I said, bottom weight fabrics or like home deck weight home decor weight fabrics. Again, you can find those on sale. They're oftentimes wider. Now here I have this kind of eye cat print. 
It's a bottom weight, so a little bit thicker than just the regular kind of drapier cotton. And it's a cotton linen blend with this really fun print. So again, I could totally make a handbag out of this without having to make it stiffer, right? By keeping it just as is. And you can see it has some drape to it, but it also has a lot more body than a quilting cotton. Now here I have another sample for you, and this is a cotton canvas that can oftentimes be found in the home decor section of your local fabric store. This is super popular for a ton of handbags, project bags, organizers, and things like that because the fabric weight on its own is plenty to give enough shape and kind of contain whatever it is that you're making to hold, right, that the bag is going to be holding inside. This stuff oftentimes, again, is wider than a designer quality quilting cotton and a lot less expensive than designer quality cotton as well. Now for money saving tip number two. This has to do with the inside of the bag. So if you're working on a pattern that calls for something to add a little body to the handbag, something like a batting, a foam interfacing, or a fusible fleece, something like that that adds a little bit more bulk and body to it, there is a super affordable option that you can use instead. Now here I have two different products for you. This one here is a double-sided fusible fleece product that is oftentimes only found at independent quilt shops. So you already know it's a higher quality product. This piece here will run you about $18. And you can make several bags depending on the size. Then what I have here, you can see very similar in weight and body and drape. And although it's not fusible, way, way less expensive at only several dollars per yard, whereas this is not even full, full yardage and it costs you $18. What I have here is post-consumer recycled felt. So a great option if you're making things in bulk, if you're giving things in uh, as gifts and you have to make a lot of something and you're trying to cut back on the costs, this felt is great. Okay, it's not fusible, but if you join my clubs and classes, you know that I share tons of tips and tricks on how to go about adhering right? The layers of your handbag projects. So it doesn't matter if you're using something that's a sew-in like this would be or something that's a fusible. I always share tips with you on how to use both, but I did want to show you how they're similar in weight and you can see how they can be used interchangeably in different bag projects. One is a lot more affordable than the other. So consider felt, post-consumer recycled felt the next time that you're looking for that inside layer of your handbag projects. And money saving tip number three is save those scraps, especially the interfacing scraps. When we're making bags that there's just no other way around it, you have to use the specific interfacings or stabilizers for, save them. Let me show you how you can combine scrap pieces to carry them over to a future project so you don't have to throw those away and buy a whole new pack. So here's one thing I love to do. I have a fabric piece here based on whatever shape the template calls for, and I save my woven fusible interfacing pieces. If you've made any handbags, you've seen this stuff come up before. It's most often fused to the wrong side of your fabric, and often you'll see it called for in the lining pieces. But there's also patterns where the exterior fabric gets fused to this stuff. What I find is that my students will understand, okay, we take little chunks of this, and we're kind of filling it up in a jigsaw puzzle form. What you want to avoid is this, the overlapping, because this by itself is about the weight of a quilting cotton with some fusible on the other side. If I overlap them, now I'm adding two more layers and you most likely, depending on the fabric you're using, will be able to feel a little ridge there where they overlap, where it goes from doubled up to the other single layer side. So what I like to recommend is if you are gonna use scraps, just bump them up as close as you can get them. A lot of my beginner students especially will freak out because they're like, I'm missing a piece here, I'm missing some here, and I'm missing some on the side. This is just an additional layer of fabric that we're adding to the exterior, whatever lining piece this is, to give it a little bit more smoothness, crispness, and body to it. You don't have to cover every single little bit of it, okay? This is why the scraps come in really handy, because even if I put five or seven pieces on here of scraps, it's still overall going to achieve what I need it to do. So like this piece here, I have this scrap piece, and if this was on the cutting mat, I would probably just take the rotary cutter to it, but if not, you can just eyeball it. It's just roughly, cover it okay that will be plenty for me you know you don't have to worry about every single little teensy bit but do try to cover up as much as you can and that's why you're able to use the scraps because they come in really handy now you always want to fuse from the fabric side 
So oftentimes I will just tack these interfacing pieces a little bit at a time just to kind of hold them in place. And then I'll flip my entire piece over and properly kind of more accurately or fuse it from the fabric side. Then of course you'd go back with your scissors or rotary cutter and trim away any little bits that are sticking out. But I'm gonna fuse this so that you can see, hopefully on camera, that where there are little gaps, nobody's gonna see that. If you fuse it properly, it will still work and it's a great way to use up your scraps and still continue to use those bits in future bag projects. All right, so there's this one fully fused and even if there's like a little bit in the middle here, this is a lining piece. It's going to have a zippered pocket placed over top of it. So things like that anticipate what else is going on top. Whether you left maybe some out in the seam allowances, that's fine because that doesn't even need to be in the finished thing. It gets caught up in the seam allowance. So don't feel like it needs to be covered from corner to corner the entire thing. You can see that the whole thing has that added body that we needed and it's still gonna work just fine in your bag project. So don't throw away those scraps and use them efficiently. Now here's another sample. That's a, a popular one, the woven fusible interfacing, but here is a non-woven piece. Now this is not big enough to really use in say a strap or some type of a bag project, but if I have a piece like this, I don't really care too much the shape. I'm just gonna go like this, cut the piece I need, okay? And then I can use this piece up top here. So just use your fabric pieces as the template and reuse those scraps. And right there, I've used one strip that I couldn't really do much with, but now it's gonna be perfect to bump up here. Remember, don't overlap them, especially once you start using those thicker interfacings because it will be very obvious. So look at that, boom, boom. That's a perfect way to use up that little strip. This is a non-woven interfacing. So remember, if they're non-woven, they're made of a synthetic product, so you're not gonna wanna fuse from that side. I'll wanna place them like this, make sure those pieces are bumped up closely, Look at that, I can't even see where they meet with my fingers, I don't even feel the ridge. I don't even feel the separation because they're bumped up perfectly. And once you have it in place, go ahead and fuse it. Nobody will ever know that those were two separate pieces and you don't have to waste your money just because you have little off cuts and scraps left from other projects. So that's that, looks great. And then these little bits obviously are trash, but like this chunk, even though it's small and kind of odd shaped, save it because you can always cut a strip and fuse it to one piece, then grab another and fill in. So scraps like this size or bigger, I definitely save. So there you have it, three money saving tips that you can apply right now if you're working on handbag projects. Now I recently went ahead and put out a survey to my email newsletter subscribers to help me put the finishing touches on the new bag of the month club that I'm almost ready to release. Now the question was, what are the top two issues that you struggle with the most when it comes to making handbags? Now I went through the results already so far, but I'm still gathering the data. So if you wanna go ahead and help us out fill out the survey. I'll include it for you in the description box below. But from the information I've gathered already, over 250 responses mention zippers as their number one issue. So if that's you in that world also who has trouble inserting zippers in their handbags, I'm so glad that you're watching this video and I hope that you'll stick around because in the new bag club, we are definitely gonna tackle some zippers. And if you're someone that thinks that it is too expensive to make handbags because of all the additional costs and notions and supplies that you need, definitely stick around because in my new bag club, I will be sharing with you multiple options. We will be talking about cork fabric and leather and pleather if you wanna go those routes, but we will also be talking about some very budget-friendly options that will allow you to save time and money if you're someone who just wants some quick projects or if you're looking to increase your profit margin because you sell handbags as a business. So that's it for now. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.